In today's lesson, we will be covering Chapter 9 in your statistics textbook. Stats that are computed for use within an HIM department usually relate to labor cost, productivity, and staffing. And these are often used in determining whether the department can hire a new employee, set benchmarks for productivity, maybe looking at absentee rates of employees, and the list could go on and on. Those are just a few examples. One example where an HIM manager must make effective decisions in regard to employee compensation and labor unit costs is essential. The annual compensation for an individual employee is calculated by multiplying the number of hours worked per year and for a full-time employee that's 2,080 and multiplying that, like I said, by the hourly wage, and then by the number of benefits received. And here is that formula here for you. Hours times wage, and the annual salary times the amount or the percentage of benefits. That will give the annual compensation per employee. The unit labor cost, that's determined by dividing the total annual compensation that you got from the formula we just went over by total annual productivity. For example, workload in a transcription section of the HIM department is commonly measured in lines or minutes of dictation that was transcribed. So determine the unit transcription labor cost you would divide the total transcription annual compensation by the total annual productivity. Productivity, that's defined as a unit of performance. And management looks at that when looking at quantitative standards. Productivity will allow the organization really to measure how well they convert input to output or labor into a product or service. Most health information management departments have productivity standards for different areas within their department. For example, in the coding section, a productivity standard may be employees should code four inpatient charts per hour in a seven and a half hour workday and then we're taking into account the employee breaks there. 30 inpatient records should be coded per day. But really, how does the manager know how many records that they should set as a standard? Some things that, that they should look at when making that decision. Does the coder do anything else besides coding? Do they abstract? Are they getting interrupted with phone calls? questions from other departments or physicians, or do they need to obtain additional information about the diagnoses or procedures performed. And they also should look at what kind of records are being coded. What's the length of stay? Are the cases complex or are they simple? All those should be taken into consideration when setting up that number of units coded per day. Your textbook, Chapter 9, goes over two simple formulas that will accurately calculate labor productivity. One, to get completed work, we need to look at the total work output minus defective work. And then we have labor productivity to get that. Look at completed work divided by hours worked to produce that output that we're looking for. Determining the total work output and the hours that are worked, that's felt rarely, or that's pretty clear. But when we look at determining defective work, that involves auditing the work to determine if work is defective or not. There are three ways to audit records. First, the manager could perform a review of all work performed 100% of the records, 
Secondly, the manager could perform a review of work chosen through a random audit. Or thirdly, the manager could use a fixed percent random sample audit. That last suggestion is the easiest. This method requires the manager, manager excuse me, to select a fixed percent of an employee's total work for review. The manager also has that predetermined quality standard in mind and then reviews the work and classifies it as defective or not. Additional work can be reviewed if it is needed to determine what if, if there is a large defect or the type of defect. More records can be reviewed to dig down further into that defectiveness. Healthcare organizations do use a variety of methods to determine appropriate staffing levels. For example, many outpatient facilities use patient encounter per full-time equivalent employee or FTE per month. A patient encounter is any personal contact between a patient and a physician or any other person that's authorized to furnish health services for diagnosis or treatment. That can include lab, x-ray, PT, any other ancillary services would be included. The staffing level is determined by dividing the number of patient encounters by the expected productivity. An FTE is the total number of workers, including part-time, in an area as the equivalent of full-time positions. The number of FTEs does not always equal the actual number of employees because two or more part-time employees might equal one full-time employee. The formula that we use, that we talked about already, patient encounters divided by productivity, that would be the number of FTEs or full-time employees that are needed. If you happen to be responsible for supervising a group of employees now or in the future, you will likely have to be responsible for budgeting. Usually, HIM departments are involved with expense and capital budget. Basically, a budget that's a plan that converts the organization's goals and objectives into targets for revenue and spending. Planning for the budget does begin several months before the facility's fiscal year begins. During the planning process, the HIM director or supervisor will determine an approximate for the department's expenses in the coming year. That can include all the things listed on this slide, supplies, employee wages and benefits, memberships if they are paid, any subscriptions, postage, copying, any expenses that the department incurs. Estimates are also made of revenues that will come in to the HIM department. These would include release of information being the bulk of the revenue coming into the department. HIM is, is not a very revenue-driven department, although our coding drives the revenue, that revenue does not come back to the HIM department. So the main source of revenue for HIM is release of information costs. Budgets are made for the fiscal year, a consecutive 12-month period used by an organization is the accounting period. During the year, usually each month, the department director receives budget reports showing the amounts budgeted and then the actual amounts that were spent. This re report generally alerts the department director whether or not they are on budget, over budget, under budget. Any differences between the budgeted amount and the actual amount are called variances. The formula to look at variance is the actual amount spent minus the amount budgeted. That will give us 
our variance or the difference. The capital budget, that accounts for the major assets the facility will purchase during that fiscal year. For example, equipment for the HIM department or those high dollar purchases. A facility has to say what is high dollar to them. For example, one facility may say its purchases over $500. Another facility may say that amount is 1000 The item usually has a life of more than one year. The department director may ask the supervisor to calculate a payback period, and that's the cost justification. How long will it take to recover the cost? How long will it take to pay for this piece of equipment, for example? The formula that we'll use is the total cost of the product divided by the annual cash inflow coming into the organization. The return on investment, that's the rate in which cash is recovered from an investment project. How quick are we getting our money back? The formula to use for return on investment is average annual cash inflow divided by total cost of the product. For all of these formulas that we talk about in this slide, there are many, many examples in your textbook that not just this chapter, every chapter you should be going through because those really are a good preparatory measure for the exams. There's not a lot of graded work in this class, so it is essential that you take it upon yourself, do the extra work, put the time in, and do the, all the exercises in your textbook. Many statistical reports in healthcare settings are computer generated. However, a computer can only calculate stats from data that is entered. Standardization of terminology, data elements, and formulas from sources um, really are needed to produce data that is reliable and is useful. When a computer statistical report is received, the HIM professional should examine it carefully carefully. For example, they should verify the total number of discharges listed in a report from coded record, compare it against the total discharges according to census data. Do they match? If not, find out why that report is not pulling accurate data. These are some reports that can be used. Discharge reports, financial reports, readmit, or case mix reports. In your textbook, figure 9.4 does have a sample of a computer-generated case mix index report. So please um, look in your textbook to review that. The report portrays a facility's case mix index for all financial classes for the month and the fiscal year to date. So, like I said, be sure and, and look at that. As a review, Case mix is the average relative weight for all cases treated at a facility or by a given physician. Generally, it's, it's per facility. It reflects the resource intensity of a specific group in relation to other groups. Healthcare organizations are always interested in effective ways to measure utilization of services provided by physicians. One approach commonly used is profiling. Profiling is defined as a measurement of quality, utilization, and cost of medical resources provided by physicians that is made by employers, third-party payers, a government entity, or other purchasers, purchasers of health care. This is important to administration because they need to know if physician services are increasing or are they decreasing. If they're increasing, maybe they need additional equipment or maybe they need additional staff. If they're decreasing, the question of why remains and that would probably be investigated at that point.